Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhens and welcome to an SP Patrons video today that I'm making for Ghost as part of their custom monthly music review. And if we switch over to here we have ourselves a track on the screen, this is from Ax, Sam Lee and Kevin Lin, titled You Love Her So Much, so we're going to listen through this track from start to finish. I'm going to hear what we think. we also got lyrics in the end kindly provided by Ghost, so yeah let's go, let's do it. What have we got? What have we got here? Is that a violin? Curse has a lovely violin tone there. Charismatic guitar lead. Interesting chord progression there, kind of unpredictable. Hmm. Hang on, I was just checking whether there were captions or not, but... Very gentle with those chorusy guitars ones. Yep. Oh, charming hand off to the violin solo. Very distinct voices as well. I mean, it was a reasonably comfortable legato transition between his chest and head voice. I'm not sure who the stronger singer is. I think they're fairly evenly matched, and if either one of them is, uh, you know, they're holding back for each other. There's a nice chemistry between them on stage. Ah, great job with the guitar legs. Is that guitar in the eye? Fantastic vocal fry there. Nice fluctuation there. Great. Probably a friendly, cheery little ending there on the keys. No, that was that was a great song. I'm wanting to talk more about it in the conclusion, but let's have a look at the lyrics first. 
So apparently this track, at least as far as this translation page is suggesting, this is originally from Kevin Lynn. Uh, you loved her so much. So we've got the lyrics here. Until love disappeared, you then understood to cherish every beautiful scenery surrounding you. So we're asking why we didn't decide to stay with one, that we wouldn't want to commit to a woman, why we let them go. Okay, I get it. So is this us deciding between or struggling with commitment to someone so we're not wanting to really keep them around? Are we regretting that decision? I think that's basically the crux of it. And welcome to the conclusion of my review of this track from Axe, Sam Lee and Kevin Lynn titled You Love Her So Much, which I think was initially written by Kevin Lynn. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Don't, don't quote me on that or... You know, I can, I'm a big boy, I can handle it. But I think we've spoken about what this song was about within the, in the lyrics section. With that in mind, do I think that the vocals match the story of not being able to commit to a woman, regretting, or to a partner, regretting them, not having them, or sticking with them, etc.? Do I think that vocal performance matches it? I think to a certain extent it does. I'm not sure if I got the full amount of oomph that I would usually want from a track like this. It almost seemed like they were more trying to sing it to appease the audience than to sell the story itself. I'm sure they were genuine about what they were writing, but I can only imagine from the controlled, polished performance we had here that it was more of a situation where maybe we understood we couldn't emote too much, so it was more about just creating a nice time for the audience rather than sort of putting our hat out on stage and I know that might sound incredibly severe but that's my impression with it I think that they may have gone through something like this in the past but just it, it's definitely seeming like one of those stage performances where it's a famous song and they want to show everyone it and it's for the crowd more than anything and that's dope don't get me wrong this is my my interpretation of the way they sung they're both really really good singers they have great vocals and they're really competent in the head and chest voice they had little bits and pieces where they would do little flurries and fancy bits and ornamentation and little legato and vibe. They, they had a lot of pizzazz to the performance i think maybe it was that it was the live mixing that kind of killed the dynamic range of the track the vocals were very flat there was very little dynamic range in them i did still appreciate their skillless performance though the track at uh how long is this one this one is 4 minutes 11. I think that's a really good length. I th it's just outside of the 2 to 4 minute sweet spot, although from my memory, I think that they started maybe a few seconds in and ended a few seconds before the 4 minute mark, so it's just within that 2 to 4 minute sweet spot. That's enough time to get through some verses, some choruses, I think we had a few repetitions of the chorus section there, judging from what I read in the lyrics. We had enough flair with the backing elements there, including the violin solo there, the guitars, the bass, the drum, the keys, to really help the track move along. And I think instrumentally, it was great to listen to. The motifs or the chord progressions we had in the track, there were several different ideas we had there, and they never stuck on one for too long in a way that was detrimental to the performance. And I don't think there was any filler. The one that happened the most was the hook part because there was a lot of repetition of the hook. But I think you add more intensity to the vocal performance as things went on. So it was okay if we had that repeated because they changed it up a little bit each time, which I appreciate. Such as with the time where they had the guitar over the top or the time where they did a little bit more sort of like fancy stuff with the vocal runs. The drums were relatively chilled out in this one. There was a bit of oomph to them, but they were kind of, they were definitely more of a supportive element rhythmically in the mix, just keeping the song propelled forward. They didn't want to poke their nose out too much. The bass guitar that we had there was performing a similar function. I think it was there basically to make the chord progression sound a bit more kind of rounded. The guitar parts, I think that there were some interesting kind of like steel string chorusy bits that were going around the sides of the stereo field there that articulated a lot of what the keys were trying to do really well. It added a little bit of that kind of 80s flair to it, indicating this might be an older track, so they might be trying to aim for that nostalgia factor as it was a fashionable thing then, as well as in the 90s in certain parts of the world. I think that the keys that we had alongside, they were wonderful, but it should be worth noted that I think the lead guitar that we had with some of those passages there, as well as the interesting panning on the left side, going into the center for like the bigger bit near the end, was stunning. I, I thought that was a great solo. Not, I, I don't know how they could have improved it. The, the solo didn't necessarily speak to me and wow me, but I think it was just appropriate in regards to the way it was phrased for this thing we had. We didn't have a lot of wild, crazy things happening with the rest of the piece. So I think that the fact that the lead guitar was so respectful to that 
angle is is good is worth is worth noting i think that with this track you had the keys as well performing the function of having a mid to higher essence with the iteration of the chord progressions and harmonies there were some broken chord parts but they typically supported the vocals very well and when you put the different elements of that instrumental backing there you've got a track which just sounds really full of life and full of vigor and i i enjoy that i think that's really positive the violin the way it was played was great I know I said that I like the sound of the violin, but I'm not necessarily sure if I like how it was recorded. It sounded a little bit scratchy and it didn't have the fullness that I'd expect from... It's, that, that's nothing to do with technique, by the way. The violin itself, the way it was recorded, sounded a bit thin and there was a little bit of a high kind of a bit of shrillness there that I didn't necessarily appreciate. I think the playing of the violin was phenomenal, but it's just that it almost was a little bit too bright for the mix, if that makes sense at all. Or maybe they were aware that the vocalists were in that mid to high range like for the male range and so they were mid mid range for the, so they were trying to get them to contrast especially with all the guitar and um all the guitar stuff going on but look e either way the violin was probably the star of the show for me outside of the vocals i think the solo the very solo lead sections that we had which were nice trade-offs of the vocals were wonderful so yeah i i think this song would not have been nearly as interesting if we didn't have the violin parts even though the vocal performances were great it most of it was very very I, I, it's not entirely safe. There are a few unpredictable chord progressions, but like most of it was very, very safe. I'm glad we had that context in there. The motif itself, it sounded like one of those tracks where it's like, ah, oh, you know, it's just how it is. I feel a little bit sad, but you know, th things will be whatever, you know, it's just, it's not, there's a sense of ambivalence I get from the depth of the lyrics and how it, the, the pain that we're talking about, but also trying to sort of juxtapose or make it work by not having a backing that is too heavy. We had majors and minors and some uh, some like famous and easily recognizable movements between bass notes and stuff like that. And I, I think that they worked well for this piece in general. It's just that I could kind of figure out what was going on most of the time without necessarily needing to put a whole lot of effort into it. And that's not a flex. It's just, it's good for music to have its own identity. And I think that the problem here is that I don't know if this track necessarily stands on its own as something. It's not, not that it's poorly written, don't get me wrong. It's just, I've listened to a lot of music and I'm not really sure about what makes this song super unique apart from the vocalist or the vocalists in this one. But it doesn't matter because it's still very popular and a lot of the reason that music like this is successful is because it is a very cozy thing for people to listen to talking about a subject matter that is cozy for them so it's absolutely fine but yeah it sounds like someone who's just kind of happy like they're unhappy about the situation but they don't want to ruminate on it too much and they're just kind of accepting that it's just what it is they're having a conversation with themselves trying to figure out where they went wrong but that's not bothering them too much that's what the music sounded like and i'm not sure if that's what was meant to be interpreted with the vocal performance or the songs but that's how i heard it so it's not often i say this but i'm not really sure if there is a massive amount of connection between the parts of the track and it's a shame because i want to say there is because i can tell these guys are commercial braid you know look at the studio mixing and mastering everything in here recorded in here was down there flawless I know I said I wasn't a massive fan of the violin tone, but aside from that, I think everything else was wonderful. And even the violin tone was good. I just expect that at this level that they're at, that everything will be absolutely pristine. But that can be a kind of brutal assumption to make. And honestly, some of the best music, even in live situations for major labels as a part with, it's not absolutely perfect. But I think that things were well leveled. That there was no resonances in the freaky spectrum. Things were nicely balanced there and nicely niched. Nice and wide in the stereo field. Drums, bass, guitar, keys had their own presence. and didn't sort of like stomp all over each other there was there wasn't like there wasn't a lot of dynamic range in this it was a very tight life performing but i think it was because they wanted to make it for like tv broadcast and with tv broadcast you've got a little bit more compression in there so that things are a little bit kind of more stuck together it's not like a movie where like this huge amount of dynamic range tv you people want people to constantly be paying attention so that that's basically the, the deal there but that doesn't mean it's a bad recording it's just what it is it's the nature of the beast that's not was nice and loud without pumping so the bus compression limiting was handled really well and i mean effectively this is my review of this tracks from x uh, sam lee and kevin lynn titled you love her so much i don't know if i got the meaning of the song right you know i love her so much but i couldn't commit to and i regret that is that it but we're gonna Thank you for watching this this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show us some love via the various social medias and YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe. Please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. 
as I need to help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world and I'll catch you in the next SU Patrons video. Spider hands up.